Okay, volume seven of the Bible story. Um, this is my seventh book and seventh volume. And the front, we have a representation of Mary and a title of Jesus. And on the back, we have Joseph the carpenter at work. And we are at part three, story three, the voice from heaven. Okay. That whispering word spread like fire. The Messiah. From group to group, it swept till everybody in the crowd was looking at John with a great hope in his heart. Perhaps this mighty preacher who could so move heart that even Pharisees, Sadducees, Pharisees and Sadducees humbly asked for baptism might be the one, the very one of whom all Israel had been waiting for so long. Then somebody told John, and he was shocked. No, no, he cried. I am not the Christ. I am only his messenger, sent to prepare the way for him. Are you Elijah then? Someone asked. No, not Elijah, said John. Then who are you? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. If you're not the Christ or Elijah, asked the Pharisee, why do you baptize people? John said, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you who ye know not. He is who coming after me is preferred before me whose shoes latches I am not worthy to unloose oh so he did see Jesus and he knew he was there okay he knew he was there of course he probably saw his cousin because I if I I've done it because I had my uh was working one one day and uh my cousins come through and I saw him come in through the store, and I was like, and then I ran up to him, and of course, I hugged him. And, you know, that happened. So, he probably did see him like that. Okay, and then let's get back to the story. What does he mean? The people must have asked. Is the Messiah already among us? Is he somewhere in this crowd? Then they look around. But they couldn't see anybody who looked like the Messiah they expected. Surely John must have been mistaken. There was nobody here whose shoes he wasn't worthy to untie. It that it was a a very stra it was all very strange. They wished John would wouldn't be so mysterious sometimes. While everybody was talking and wondering what John meant, a young Galilean, about 30 years of age, began moving closer to the riverbank. Nobody took any special notice of him. He was just one of the crowd going to be baptized. Suddenly, John looked up. As he caught sight of Jesus, a strange look came upon his face. In the hundreds of people who had come to him for baptism, he had never seen anyone like this. Purity, goodness, nobility shone from his clear eyes and kindly face. There was something strange, strangely godlike about him. him. Oh, he really knew. Because he knew when uh, he was inside Elizabeth. So this kind of, in my theory, kind of, you know, he actually, well, he probably, well, like this song that I like to hear. Um, uh, it's called Lazarus. 
Lazarus come forth. Um, I like it, it, so it sounds to me like it, that. So, you know, the singer actually gets you thinking, oh, and different things. Is it that? Or is it he's the one? Oh, yeah. It's uh, Well, there's two of them. There's one called Lazarus Come Forth. And then there's a, he's the one. Yeah, he's the one. It's the, the one that actually goes in this story. And, of course, now i got the record of it playing in my head. He's the one. Um, uh, but you'll look it up. It, you can Google it and find it. Uh, the singer uh, died about a couple of years ago. And, yeah. Okay, let me get back. Surely this must be the Messiah. As Jesus asked for baptism, John refused. Oh no, he said, you should baptize me. And then it has a picture of two men talking. And it's a uh, Davili. And of course, John and Jesus, uh, since they're being so close cousins, they would kind of look similar. And of course, that's what they, uh, they kind of the artist painted them kind of similar. And they would be kind of similar since Elizabeth was a very close relative to Mary. And she probably looked like an older Mary. You know, just think of it in your brain. Okay, let's get back to the story. But Jesus insisted, let it be so, he said. He wanted to fulfill all righteousness. He had no sin to be washed away, but washed to set a pure example before all who should follow him. I know, robot voice him. Had he not been baptized, others would have had no, an excuse for staying, for saying that they did not need to be baptized either. And Jesus knew that would not be a good not be good for them. John at last agreed. Gently he lowered Jesus into the Jordan until the water covered him completely. Then just as careful just as carefully he lifted him to his feet. At that very moment something miraculous happened. The Bible says that when Jesus went up out of the water, lo, the heavens were open unto him, and they saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and light and lightning lighting upon him. Uh, some pictures have uh, a dove actually landing on him, but it says like a dove. So it probably looked like a, a since in the old other stories there was cloud, so it could have been a, a dove shaped cloud. No, you know we weren't there because that was two thousand years ago. But you know that's just my brain clicking. And lo, from heaven, okay, lying upon him, and and lo, a voice from heaven saying. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then, of course, this is a Diva Lee painting. And, of course, John and Jesus are about the same age. Are, you know, about. Because John is only like six months older. And they kind of hid the, uh, the text. But this is the painting. And you see all these people looking shocked as the, the dove right here lands on Jesus. Um, some people say 
It lands on his head. Some people have it landing on his shoulder. Um, we don't know. Pretty much nobody knows. But there's always been a dis depiction of it as a dove. Okay? And then it says right here, How very, very wonderful. Amid all the jousting, jostling crowd, his father had recognized him and called him my son. From all, from all his mother had told him, and from all his studies of scriptures, he had believed he was the son of God, sent to be the savior of the world. Now he was double sure, doubly sure, beyond all possible possibility of doubt. A heaven, wait, all heaven had been waiting and watching for this moment. For now it was that the precious babe of Bethlehem, the noble youth of Nazareth, became Messiah the Prince. The anointed one, anointed by the Holy Spirit of God, and it happened at the exact time foretold by Gabriel to Daniel long years before. Now, after 30 years of preparation, of study, work, and worship, Jesus was ready to begin his ministry of love that he had planned for him. That had been planned for him from the foundations of the world. How beautiful it was that on this very day his father should say to him, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Just know that, just to know that his father loved him and was pleased with him must have meant more to Jesus than we could ever imagine. You like your father, you like your father to be pleased with you, don't you? Okay, you like your father to be pleased with you, don't you? Okay, let's question. And I did a Roman robot voice, but uh, we're, no, uh, let me get back. <clears throat> of course you do. So Jesus was made happy too, but his father was words of praise, by his father's words of praise. Now courage lifted his heart. Now he could go to meet anything that might happen to him in the days ahead. And then... Okay, this is the Harlan. The artist changed. In the artist changed. The now it's a Harlan. It's him walking out into the desert, getting prepared. Okay, and that was part three, story three. So we're going to take the break. And then we'll be back in, in, or I will be back in a bit. See you in a bit.